Welcome back to the introduction to React series. Today I'm gonna talk about routing. The core React library does not provide a solution for routing. This means that you either have to write your own routing or use a routing library. The most widely used library is called React Router. In this video I'll show you how to install and use React Router and I'll demonstrate the most important features. I have set up this demo app. It has a navigation bar with home and product links. I want to be able to navigate to the home and product routes and then have views for each individual product. I'll start by installing React Router DOM. This is the DOM version of React Router. There is also a React Native version. To set up React Router, I must import the browser router component and wrap my application with it. I'll go to my app component and import the routes and route components. I want my nav to be visible on all pages, so I'll specify my routes beneath my navigation. There are multiple ways to achieve a reusable layout with React Router. This is the simplest one, so we'll start with it. I will now specify each route. It has a path prop, which for home will be just forward slash, and an element prop, which must be a React element. So I'll use JSX to pass element to it. I'll also specify the products route under products, and it should render the products component. Component. Let's test this. The base route shows the home component properly, and if I manually type slash products in the URL, you can see that the products component mounts correctly and replaces the home component. Let's set up the links to these routes. Normally, you would use an anchor tag with an href attribute that points to the location, but this would refresh the page, and that is not necessary in a single page application. React Router provides a link component. I'll change my anchors here with the link component, and it has a to attribute instead of href. I'll do the same for the products link, and I can test my links. They are changing the route without refreshing the page, which is the expected behavior. Frequently, you would want an active state in your navigations. React Router provides a nav link component that is similar to the link component, but has an extra functionality, which we can use to implement an active state here. I'll change my link components to nav link, and in the nav link component, I will open a function which receives properties. I'll use the isActive property from it. I'll return my menu item and mark my item as active when this flag is true. I'm using semantic UI for this demo, which has an active attribute on this menu item component. If I test the navigation, the active item is marked correctly. What happens if I enter a wrong URL? Ideally, you would want to have a 404 not found error page. Let's implement that. I'll create my component in the pages folder. It will simply render a header that says 404 page not found. I'll import it in my app component where my routes are. I have to specify a route for it and I'll use a wildcard path which will catch all routes that are not specified and render this not found component. If I test with random routes, the not found component renders correctly. When I open the product view, I need to implement these individual product links. They should render the same page but with different product information. This is usually implemented with some sort of unique identifier in the URL. In this case I'll use integers. I'll create a new component for the individual product page. I want it to render a headline that says product and the ID of the product. First of all, let's specify a dynamic route for the individual products. I can use ID as a parameter in the URL. This route will work with any ID directly after the product route. If I update the product links on the product page, I can test the route. You can see it opens the same individual product component. Now I must get the ID parameter from the URL and render it. You can use the useParams hook for that. It returns an object of all parameters in the URL. And I can just destruct it to ID directly here. I will render ID in the headline and test again. This time I'm getting the correct ID in the headline. I'm using the browser back button a lot to navigate from an individual product back to the list of products and that is an opportunity to show you one cool feature of the link component. I'll create a back button here using the button component from Semantic UI and I'll wrap it with the link component from React Router. Instead of passing a fixed URL, I can specify the to prop as the minus one integer. This will go to the previous page. I can now use the back button to navigate from the individual product route to all products. You frequently also need to use URL search 
parameters. Let's say that in this case I want to render the product title and I'll pass it as a title parameter from the products page. I'll just write three simple titles in the links here. In the individual products I'll create an h2 which says product title and in order to get the search params from the URL I'll import the use search params hook from React Router. It returns an array of search params and set search params and it also accepts a default value if necessary. You can use search params as you would the native URL search params API. In this case I'll use the get method to retrieve the title attribute. If I test it you see my titles are passed correctly to the component. Redirecting is an important part of routing. I'll show you two ways to redirect. For this example, let's redirect from the 404 not found page to the home page. The first method I can use is the navigate component which accepts a prop code 2 with the route. If I test any route now, it will redirect me to the home route. I'll undo that to show you the other method. I can also use a hook, use navigate. It returns a navigate function that I can use in my component. In this case I will make an effect. I will navigate the user away from the 404 page after 3 seconds. This effect will have the navigate function as a dependency and I will use a set timeout with 3000 milliseconds. Here in the set timeout function I can use navigate. Its parameter will be the route I want to navigate to. In this case the home page. If I test a non-existing route now I get the home page and after 3 seconds I get redirected correctly. This wraps the fundamentals of React Router. Of course the library has more features than I've shown today. But my goal was to condense the most important routing features in one video. Stay tuned for the next video in the series when I'll talk about prop types.